Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI, and this is Time In. I'm here with pianist Peter Dugan. Peter is a pianist who plays multiple genres and is also the host of NPR's From the Top. Hi, Peter. Hey, Susan. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, as well as, as well as anyone can be doing right now, I guess, but hanging in there. Right. Well, I'm so happy to meet you, and you have some great videos on your website which show a whole lot of different interests. How did you get from growing up in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania to where you are now? Ooh, it was a journey. I, I had a musical family, though there weren't professional musicians, but I was the youngest of, of three boys and, and my older brothers played. And I went to the settlement school in Philadelphia and I always knew it's what I wanted to do and was fortunate enough to get into Juilliard and moved up to New York and, uh, and I've been in New York ever since. That's where I am now. Uh, this is my music room here on the on the Upper West Side. And um, yeah, but growing up, you know, listening to RTI in the car with my with my family is uh, I'll never forget those memories. So this is pretty wild for me to come full circle like this. Wow. Well, there's an adorable picture of you on your Instagram with a red cummerbund and bow tie and a conducting baton. Yes. That must have been third or fourth grade um, when I was part of the singing group at the public school in Upper Darby. And um, we had some concert or event and the director of the groups, you know, said I could conduct the, the group for one song. Well, now pre-pandemic, you've been busy performing in recital, in chamber music. You recorded Ives Fourth Symphony with Michael Tilson Thomas and the San Francisco Symphony at the end of, I guess, 2019, somewhere around there. Yeah, it, it was released right at the end of 2019. Right. And I, I listened to the podcast of uh, a program you did on From the Top with Vijay yeah. Gupta out yeah. in uh, California, which I understand was the last program you were doing before everything shut down. That's right. That was the first week of March in L.A. in Beverly Hills at the Wallace Theater and Vijay Gupta is one of our recurring co-hosts uh, on the show. And it was our first time getting to play together. And just such a memorable experience being on stage with him and with amazing young musicians, as is always the case with From the Top. Uh, but yeah, it was. we were just starting to realize that maybe things weren't going to uh, stay the same for a while. You know, just we were becoming more aware of what was happening with the virus. So that was the last time we, we filmed or, or taped in front of a live audience. And we actually had the Los Angeles Children's Chorus come on stage and uh, they sang Over the Rainbow. And it was just such a beautiful moment. Um, and so something that we, we are so missing right now, the, the, the presence of a large group of musicians all, all creating one sound together. Um, so, so it's, yeah, it's quite special. And then after that, I went to South Carolina uh, to the Aiken, uh, Joy and Aiken Music Festival, where my wife and I were performing. And we, we had our last concert on Friday the 13th of March. Wow. And, um, and it was already, by that point, we knew that this was going to be the last one because everything else had been canceled. Wow. So then you went back to New York? Yeah, we flew back to New York on the 14th. The, the airport was already sort of a ghost town. And we... We hunkered down here for for a very long time. We still have been. I've traveled a couple times. It's been, you know, simultaneously scary and also um, exhilarating to kind of get the taste of what it's like back uh, back out on the road. So, what's life been like for you at home, or what was it like initially when before you started traveling again? Well, the first week felt like an eternity. I don't know if you remember that, but I remember. Um, thinking by, you know, Wednesday or Thursday of that first week. Wow. It's all, it's been three days and we just, <laughs> the scale, the sense of scale was so off, um, given how, how extended this whole thing has been. But yeah, so we started doing puzzles on day one. Um, and then after a couple of days, I felt, you know, I need to start being creative. Um, not need to, but I actually wanted to. One of the things that I, was reflecting on at that time is how my schedule had been so busy in terms of touring 
and and preparing mm-hmm. my my career is so all over the place that I end up having so many hours and hours of of repertoire that I have to perform in a short very short period of time that so much of my time is is dictated by what concert is next so I'd really been missing this idea of allowing my creativity to just kind of go wild um so that's for me that's really what the early days of the pandemic were about was kind of allowing myself to just be freely creative and so that's where I started doing you know various like multiples of myself and in all sorts of genres and um just just weird things that that made you know it was fun for me it was what I missed about um not having more time so uh and then uh, from the top fairly early on decided that we needed to continue to make shows uh and so we all got together and talked through you know what what would actually be possible given the way things are and obviously we were able to do remote interviews but the way we did it was we put together a big box of gear mm-hmm. and shipped it around the country to our young musicians and uh and they would set up forts so that you know to deaden the sound <laughs> and so we called it the blanket fort shows we did two of these and then for collaborations i actually did on each show i did remote collaborations where the young musicians and i would send recordings back and forth and i would memorize their you know, the nuances of their timing and then play along with their recordings uh, to try to get it. And ultimately, we were happy. I mean, it was almost convincing that you would think we were in the same place playing together. So that was exciting. It was a it was a beautiful journey to go on. And, and I was I feel really fortunate that I had that as an outlet and a, a source of, of work and inspiration during during those early days. Well, you also have the daily joy so daily joy was we came up with that um in the very first week of lockdown um we we had a, a new uh, person on on the team at, from the top who is uh, in charge of kind of the social media side of things and and together they they devised this daily joy series which would be every day just a little snippet of something from one of our alums and i think we're, we're reaching a pretty broad audience now uh, you can go to fromthetop.org uh, and subscribe and get those daily joy videos. It's, they're really fun, and it's great to just see that there are all these young musicians out there who are still being creative and producing, you know, beautiful music. So you mentioned that your schedule before the pandemic hit was kind of crazy with, with a lot of concerts and hosting from the top. How did you plan your concert part of your career? Oh, I've been... <laughs> I've been my own manager, my own personal assistant, my own uh, travel agent. So it's a lot of it's a lot of hats to wear and a lot that I have to um, to maintain and figure out. But um, it keeps it exciting for me because I'm very lucky in that I all the performances that I do and, you know, especially before quarantine, all the all the concerts that were on my schedule were things that I was excited about and and things that I that I love to do. And that meant often there'd be a big variety in terms of what what the musical content would be. The, the kinds of music I play with, for example, Charles Yang, right. um, that kind of a show would be very, very different from um, my if I do a concert with my wife, who's a who's a mezzo soprano, or if I do a recital with Joshua Bell, who I play with quite a bit. And that's, you know, more standard repertoire. And then when I do a solo recital, that also is is unique because I. I start off with more traditional classical repertoire and then in the second half I'm playing my arrangements and and originals and so um yeah it was always very varied and um but I always somehow managed to stay somewhat in control of what artistic projects I was getting involved in and that meant that even though I was busy I was always pretty happy right well I was going to mention the Charles Yang videos that are on your website they're pretty they were really fun to watch. It's music, but it's also a little bit of theater. Yeah, I, if you're referring to the good, the bad, and the ugly, <laughs> that one is fully produced um, by ourselves. We were that was a video that we were um, at this beautiful spot in in Western Colorado, and uh, right near the Utah border. And we were just we had a show that night, and rather than rehearse for the show, we just decided to have some fun. 
and be inspired by the landscape. So we've put together this parody of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And of course, we reshared it this this year, and in, in because after Morricone passed away, and it was just right. um, it just felt like there a, a good opportunity to sort of pay homage to that iconic song. But yeah, we we just spent all day filming and and being our own directors, and we, you know that's for me at the end of the day, like it has there has to be that joy when with with whatever you do, uh, if you're going to go into the arts. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Right. <laughs> Who filmed it? We filmed each other, planned out the shots, and then he'd say, okay, now I'm going to play, and then you film me. And then, so we, we recorded the music separately, and then we, you know, like a music video would be, would, the way a music video would be filmed. And then uh, for the wide angle, we just put it on a tripod and, and had our duel. So. Right. Well, it was super cool and super fun. <laughs> So did, have you, during this pandemic period, I mean, it's, it's your wife, you and your wife work together and have you started doing things that you hadn't done before? Did you uh, go out and buy a rowing machine or start, <laughs> start some new exercise habit or cooking habit? Uh, we've definitely been cooking more, which has been a great uh, joy. And we've been, we are very lucky to have a, a, a rooftop space so we go up there and we we got into gardening especially Kara uh, my wife and so um in the early part of the summer late spring um we we bought a bunch of seeds and got to watch pepper plants grow and just last night we we were eating these like stir fried peppers that we we planted them just as seeds and that was pretty cool to experience that and we'd never done anything like that before the other thing for me is that just getting into the tech, diving, sort of diving in the tech world. My dirty secret, which now everyone knows because I've been s telling people this, is that <laughs> I didn't have a computer you until, until the third week of March. I did everything on, on my iPad. Uh, uh, it was just more, you know, easier to, to transport and I could do almost everything I needed to. And we had a very old laptop that was hardly functional. And then, um, Mid-March, I just knew I was going to need some good gear. So I got a, a serious computer and I, I got a audio interface and some microphones and like, yeah, pretty much transformed this, this room into a somewhat functional studio. And um, that's been interesting, learning all the software, learning video editing and um, audio editing. So I, I've been, it's something I've always wanted to do and never had the, the time or the, or the sort of mental space to actually learn it all and figure it all out uh that's been very fun for me wow so that's something that and the gardening sounds like both things that you'll continue after the shutdown is over or the pandemic is past for sure um the gardening we'll have to see because it's really hard to keep a, like especially a rooftop garden where everything's in pots um if you're not home all the time right. you know that's because they, those things need so much water. We went away during the summer for two nights to go camping, and we came back and we were just devastated because everything oh, was, no. of course, it, it sprung back up. But when we first uh, went, went up onto the roof after coming back in just two days without water, and we were like, no. Nah. <laughs> Our heart stopped for a second. And then I called my mom. I was like, mom, all the plants are dying. And she said, they'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Just it'll all, They'll spring back up with some water, which they did. But anyway, so we'll see. We'll see if we're able to keep planting once we're traveling again. So you mentioned camping. Is that something you've done your whole life, or did you just start that? That was another new thing that will that will continue. That um, it was because we wanted to spend time with my. We're very. I'm very close with my brothers, and they're they all have families, and um, we wanted to be able to see them, but it just didn't feel like there would be a safe way to do it. So we all went camping together. It was so much fun. So we bought a tent. We bought our sleeping bags and all that stuff. <laughs> Well, speaking as a nun camper, I mean, I have camped at times in my life. It sound, that sounds pretty adventurous. Like somebody has to know what they're doing. Yeah, someone. Had, well, <laughs> yes, that's true. Which neither of us really did, although we both were trying to convince each other that we did. But um, my brothers have done it more, and we weren't exactly. It's not like we were backpacking. Uh, we had our cars. And, uh, you know, we weren't very far from civilization. What I'll tell you is that we practiced setting up our tent in the living room uh, before because we didn't want to show up and be totally clueless, especially in front of my older brothers. Right. They would have just mercilessly mocked, you know, the city brother 
<laughs> oh yeah, sure. Here he comes. Can't because they both. We all grew up in, like you said, in Upper Darby, but they've since moved out to more, slightly more rural areas. So they still look at me as like the city boy. So um, I couldn't couldn't stand the, the the prospect of getting mocked by them. So yeah, we we set up the tent in the living room. We crawled inside, figured it all out, and then when we went to go camping, it was good because it was raining. So we had to actually set it up really fast or else we would have, you know, gotten soaked and it, it worked out. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you grew up in Upper Darby. Did you go to uh, school there? The other famous Upper Darby alum, Tina Fey. Yep. So Tina Fey, you know, famously went to the Upper Darby summer stage right. um, performing arts uh, theater program. And I, I went through that program a little bit as well, but playing in the pit band rather than acting on stage. And um, I did not go to Upper Darby High School. I went to St. Joe's Prep in, in North Philadelphia. Yeah, so sh shout out to any any prep people watching this. But um, yeah, I, I you know, always went to see shows at the Upper Darby Performing Arts Center. It's a great resource. And we'll go every summer to the summer stage. And we'll, I would see the Philadelphia Orchestra there when they would come, they would go there fairly, at least in my mind, it was fairly frequently. And members of the Philadelphia Orchestra would come into the public schools when I was um, going to public school. So, you know, we were always exposed to um, to really great music and, and culture being so close to Philadelphia. Right. When you have so much music in your life, in, in all aspects of your life, and you want to just relax, what do you do? Do you listen to music? Is there a certain kind of music that's your... I'm not going to think about work music or do you do something else? Watch movies or take a walk mm. or. Definitely have gotten into some movies and, and shows, especially during the, during the past few months. Musically for me, it's the blues. That's where, that's where I go when I, when I need to just unwind, I'll just come into this room. And even if it's late at night, I just put headphones on because this is, you know, digital piano you probably hear that but um yeah so i'll come in here and just just play the blues or listen to the blues and th i've been doing that since i was little that was always my way to to kind of unwind uh since i yeah since i was very small so that's what i do that's great that's great well what do you think drives you in this existence that you have and what are you looking forward to as things open up again mm. what drives me um creativity and exploration musical exploration is a huge uh excitement for me uh, and that can take many forms um learning new repertoire you know that kind of thing any kind of act of discovery uh, is hugely exciting to me and drives me and keeps me going collaboration keeps me going um so whether that's with my peers um, or or with uh, the young musicians on From the Top, the actually the the collab the art of collaboration is a huge inspiration for me because you you bring all of your own energy to something and then you discover a wealth of other energy that you can bounce off of. Um, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I recorded in a studio with a From the Top young From the Top musician for the first time, and uh, and it was like. Th absolutely thrilling just just to be doing that again so i'm really excited about continuing to, to do that i'm going on a pretty extensive tour with joshua bell in 2021 which so far most of those dates are are holding or at least just getting pushed back rather than fully canceled so uh i'm really looking forward to that we we have a great time collaborating and and uh you know it's a huge inspiration to play with him so i'm um, looking forward to that and just who knows? We'll we'll see what what happens. But surprises are always welcome for me. I always like uh, when new things pop up. It keeps me ex keeps me going. Well, maybe working with kids a lot also fuels that sense of surprise because you never you never know. Mm -hmm. What have you learned from working with these kids? Now you were oh. you were an alum as well. So yeah, um, what's it like to now be a host and work with all these kids? Well. Every time I think that I'm going to bring something to them to sort of open their minds or give them something new to think about, they just give back two or three times as much in terms of the inspiration they're, they're giving to me. So um, in terms of what do I learn from them, um, it's, it's 
hope for the future. That's like, that's what, that's what I get out of working with these young musicians. What I'm finding is that these musicians are becoming more and more open-minded and thoughtful and, and, and aware of what's, what's going on around them. I feel like when I was the age, when I was on the show, you know, we were kind of, we were having a great time, but we were still kind of just doing our thing. And, um, so many people were kind of stuck in that, in that one, um, classical track with all the expectations that are built around that. And it's something that I really believe in that I'm trying to, to, you know, further in, in the mentality of these young musicians is the idea that, Hey, just get out there. Don't feel like you have to follow that one particular, uh, set of expectations. Um, the, the industry is changing. The career options are changing. Uh, all your doors are open and, uh, and they're great. These young musicians are amazing. If you don't listen to the show, listen to it because they are, they're truly a source of inspiration, not just the way they play, but the way they think about the world. Right. And kids seem more resilient than you might think. So if, when a, we have this, this kind of a crisis, they seem to go with the flow. Yep. They, they, they accept it for what it is. And then they say, you know what, how can I make the most of this situation that I'm in? And, uh, that's, we all, that's what we all need to be doing. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for sharing your thoughts with us. Absolutely. It's, it's a pleasure. And um, I, I'm really happy to be talking, especially to WRTI, the this, this station that I grew up listening to. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Peter Dugan. Thank you, Susan.